Hello and welcome to See You Live. I'm Susan Post, Associate Editor of Columbus Underground, and I have with me today uh, Dr. Mike Krager, Vice President of Conservation and Sustainability at the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium. Happy Earth Day, Mike. Happy Earth Day to you, Susan. <laughs> Um, it's shaping up to be a beautiful weekend to visit the zoo. Um, I know you have all sorts of fun activities planned for Earth Day, you know, but for the zoo, every day is really Earth Day as conservation efforts are a huge part of your mission. Um, you know, to, so to start the discussion, can you just give us a broad overview of the Columbus Zoo's conservation efforts? Well, well, a lot of people aren't aware of all the conservation that we mm -hmm. do. And it, in, in fact, just by coming to the zoo, you're helping to support conservation. We have over 77 projects in more than 28 countries around the world. And so some of these projects are, are very local and they're in the Columbus region. Some are at a national level and some are international. Great. Um, well, with that, can you give us examples of a few of those projects, maybe starting with some that are local or in Ohio? Okay, so in Ohio, we have um, one of the largest salamanders in the world. It's called the hellbender, uh -huh. or sometimes people call it the snot otter. Okay, and <laughs> oh, this terrible. is a species, yeah, and it's um, endangered in the state of Ohio. It's mm -hmm. threatened in many other places. And in Ohio, we work with a partnership, the uh, Eastern Hellbender Partnership, to try and restore that species in the waterways in which it occurs. And uh, and you can see an example of a, a hellbender in a reptile building. But one of the okay. things that we do is with the partnership, we go out into some of the streams, mostly in Western Ohio, and we'll okay. collect some of the eggs. We bring them into human care. It's actually, we, we've got a lab in the muscle facility across the Scioto River, and we've got a place mm -hmm. in the AsiaQuest building in the basement where we're, um, we're rearing young hellbenders. And okay. when they get to be about two to three years, we take them back to these creeks and restore their populations. Mm -hmm. How many are so, you talking about releasing when you do that? Hundreds. 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 Mm -hmm. And, um, and, they, they've been under threat because of agricultural runoff and mm -hmm. um, and people flipping over rocks in these creeks because they can spend most oh. of their lives living under these flat rocks. Um, so while we are working on them in the state of Ohio, the Wilds is doing something very similar and they're releasing them in West Virginia. So okay. that's one of the projects. Um, here's another one. I, I bet a lot mm -hmm. of people don't know that when you look at endangered species, the group of animals that are most endangered are freshwater mussels. And uh -huh. between Ohio and the East Coast, there's greater freshwater mussel diversity than anywhere in the world. So across the Scioto River from us, there's this white building. It's an old lodge where uh -huh. we work with our partners at the Ohio State University doing nothing but freshwater mussel research Thanks. and uh, working on threatened species and understanding their ca the causes of their decline. Mm -hmm. Really cutting edge research. So that's local. Um, yeah. We're doing I remember a lot seeing of the hellbenders work. on uh, Secrets of the Zoo and it was quite the, they're quite the creature there, I know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, we, we love them. They're, there's, uh, I think, three species that are bigger than the hellbender, but these, oh, wow. these guys, they can get pretty big, about mm -hmm. like that. Um, also, you know, if you go to the zoo and you look on the roof of the Macquarie restaurant, or if you go mm -hmm. to the wilds and you look at the roof of the Johnson Center, you'll see something that looks like a TV antenna. That's called mm -hmm. a modus tracking station. And we're tracking okay. migratory birds bats, insects that have these little tiny nanotransmitters. Nice. So we're part of an international network to see what, what do our migratory birds do? Where do they rest? Mm -hmm. When do they migrate? Are different um, sexes migrating at different times? All of this okay. really cool information. So we're part of an, a network. And mm -hmm. just uh, last week, we picked up a, a horned lark that had been nanotagged in Canada. It oh, made wow. its 
trip south and was heading back north and it came past the Columbus Zoo. So that's great. <laughs> really cool information. Yeah. Hope and enjoy the view, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. Awesome. Um, you know, so maybe tell me about some of the biggest impact projects the zoo's involved in kind of like across the globe. Well, um, a lot of people know about our manatee work. We're mm -hmm. members of the Manatee uh, Rescue Partnership. And uh, as you know, the manatee population is declining in the state of Florida due to um, the, the seabed uh, grass die off. Um, but one of the things that we can do, which a lot of manatee facilities can't do, is we can hold manatees for an extended period of time. So we get these orphans that um, are, are stranded, they're rescued, and they need time to be rehabilitated, to get to a, a normal size, and then get staged back in Florida and released into the wild. So that's a conservation program where we've got a, a fairly large investment. Mm -hmm. um, I want to give you an example of a conservation project that a lot of people, well, people aren't aware of all the conservation stuff yeah. that we do. because every animal every region of the zoo and the wilds is tied into something related to conservation right. mm -hmm. so one of our programs is called partners in conservation and okay. that's a program that works to help gorillas and local people in rwanda uganda and the democratic republic of congo okay there's um one area in rwanda it's called nyongwe national park and it's got lots of primates. I think there are 13 primate species, but it had an issue with poaching. And the poachers okay. were local people from the community who would come in, they'd set traps to catch small antelope for meat, or mm -hmm. they would climb trees to get the honey. And in order to get the honey, they would start a fire and that would burn parts of the park. So mm -hmm. as it turns out, what these poachers really wanted was a sustainable livelihood. You know, they wanted to be able to make a living and they want to be able to feed their families, get mm -hmm. kids to school, get health care, things like that. So recognizing that beekeeping would be very beneficial, we work with partners like the Wildlife Conservation uh -huh. Society and we help them get hives that could be set oh, up outside of the park. And yeah. we help purchase a um, production center so they're they're mm -hmm. making honey, they're selling honey, they're making lip balm and candles and all sorts of stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah. Tourist buses stop by there, you know? Mm -hmm. So people are, are, are making a living and there's no poaching and there's no forest yeah. fires in that area of Nungwe National Park. A simple solution. Conservation always involves people. So if you can take yeah. care of their basic needs, a lot of times you can help the wildlife. Yeah, it's interesting to see that solution isn't maybe what you expected, but what an impact right. that it's had. And, and how long has that program been going on? So the Partners in Conservation program has been going on for over 30 years. And that's right. one of the key things about our conservation program. You know, we, we want to support people over time. We don't mm -hmm. typically just go in, give somebody a grant and get out. Um, yeah. some, in some instances, we know generations of people, so they can rely on us and they know that we've got their back and we mm -hmm. want to be valued. I'm sure these things added. take time. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Sure. Great. You know, so you mentioned this earlier that just by coming to the zoo, you know, people are helping to support those conservation efforts. But, you know, what are some other ways that folks can, you know, su support these efforts um, besides that? There, you know, we we know that people come in and they want to know what can i do for rhinos if i say don't buy rhino horn chances are they're not planning to buy rhino horn you know it, the social media is valuable people can get the word out about conservation conservation projects and things you can do to benefit species internationally but there's a lot of things you can do right at home and in fact some of our field partners say hey if you want to save polar bears plant trees you know yeah, yeah. climate change is affecting where polar bears den right. how they find their food all of that kind of thing so by sequestering carbon by reducing our emissions things like that help wildlife worldwide um, another good example is if we just look at our migratory songbirds um, mm -hmm. 
we have so many species that come through Columbus and at home, you can create habitat. You can make a pollinator garden. You can set up feeding boxes. Um, there's a lot that you can do. For, we have, you know, one of the greatest causes of bird mortality is birds slamming into windows. Yeah. Okay, they see the windows and it looks yeah. like their habitat. They think they can pass right through it. So by treating the windows, you're oh, okay. saving yeah. migratory birds. Mm -hmm. So there are things like that that people can do uh, right yeah. here at home. And of course, right. supporting the zoo and coming to mm -hmm. the, the fundraisers and talks and things like that help as well. Awesome. That's great. It's nice yeah. to know there's a lot of little things like that that you can do that do have an impact. So just thinking of my mom, she she's a bird lover. And so she's got probably six or seven bird feeders in her backyard and you know so shout out to her she's doing her part uh, <laughs> and and see you know what else she could do she can take her phone okay and go on to eBird which uh -huh. is from Cornell it's an app and whatever you see in your feeders you just check the box on eBird and you're com com you're contributing to community science she does this non-digitally. She has a bird journal where she writes down what she sees every day. So oh, I think all she right. needs to donate them to science at some point. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, awesome. Um, you know, folks are going to have a chance to learn about a lot of the things that you've talked about and even more um, during the zoo's Earth Day celebrations this weekend, April 23rd and 24th. Um, you know, so kind of tell us a little bit about what visitors can expect during the, the celebration. So there's something for everybody at the celebration. Mm -hmm. And like you said, Earth Day is year round for us, but this is a chance to really highlight not only what the zoo is doing, but what our partners are doing. I mean, there's going to be the character animals walking around, mm -hmm. you know, for the, for the kids. There's also something that's kind of like a, a scavenger hunt where there will be um, tables around the zoo that highlight different activities mm -hmm. that, uh, our conservation partners are doing, like Project okay. Hutan in Borneo and what they're doing with oil palm plantations and orangutans. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we're doing people and carnivores, which works to reduce human animal conflict out west in uh, Montana with bears mm -hmm. and wolves and things like that. So people will be able to get a lot of information. And I think when you, you'll get a stamp as you go through each of these centers okay. and then you turn okay. in the sheet and you get a prize, which is a non-plastic you know? <laughs> prize. Yes, you Thanks. can help wildlife with the prize, which I won't say what it is, but everybody Ooh, okay. can use it regardless of age. Um, we have a lot of partners who will be coming to exhibit, so you can mm -hmm. talk to them. They'll be around Conservation Lake, uh, Delaware, Preservation Parks Delaware will be there, uh, Grange Audubon Institute, the Ohio Wildlife mm -hmm. Center, uh, there's a whole list. I mean, it's it's all on the yeah. on the website and it's on social media. Franklin Park Conservatory, mm -hmm. Ohio EPA, the Nature Conservancy of Ohio. These are our friends. We are not, yeah. we do things in collaboration with so many of these folks. So so they'll be there. There will be celebration stage for character ambassadors. Um, mm -hmm and uh rolling so some keeper talks there there are keeper talks there's ambassador mm -hmm. animal meet and greets from our animal Ooh. programs department mm -hmm. so you'll get to see animals close up um and our educators are doing green spot and the dots story time okay I don't all know, right but it's, uh, <laughs> Sounds if, fun for kids. If the educators think it's good, it's uh, they'll be reading this book for the kids at my house in Habitat Hollow. The Keeper Talks presented by Jermaine Car Cars are, are great. And you can, mm -hmm. our keepers are very personable and they love talking about the animals in the collection. And we've got them on lions, bears, tigers, bonobos, and otters uh, this weekend. Nice. Yeah. So that sounds lots great. That cool sounds like so much happen. fun. Yeah, and, you, and if the weather's going to be beautiful. Yeah, the the weather will be great. It's it's a good day to be at the zoo, mm -hmm. and a portion of your admission when you come into the zoo mm -hmm. is dedicated to conservation. So, by coming to the zoo on Earth Day, you actually are saving wildlife. That's awesome. Um, sounds great. 
I love the zoo. I love going to the zoo. Um, I think Heart of Africa is my favorite. I love to feed the giraffes. I'm a huge giraffe fan. You know, so as we're wrapping up, uh, Mike, I want to hear from you about, you know, what your favorite part of the zoo is or like a can't miss attraction or activity that you recommend folks check out. Oh, wow. Well. Well, I agree with you. I, I love part of Africa because mm -hmm. especially when um, when everything leafs out, it looks yeah. like Africa. And there it's are awesome. species there like Dama gazelle, which are nearly extinct in the wild. Mm -hmm. But when you see the Dama gazelle and the zebra and the giraffes and the crown cranes all in that huge savanna area, it really is spectacular. Um, That's great. The waterhole exhibit, which is in the heart of Africa, is another mm -hmm. one where you, you never know what animals you're going to see because we rotate yeah. them through. So it's like a real water hole when you're in Africa. You don't know what you're going to see there. Yeah. So we have dingoes and aardvarks and cheetahs and other things. Mm -hmm. um, Love the cheetah run. We always try to make it to that, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, you mm -hmm. know, um, probably a lot of people have yet to see our Tasmanian devils. Very few oh. zoos have Tasmanian devils. Mm -hmm. So they're in the Australia and the islands region. We've got three of these guys. Um, they are an incredible species. Um, they're marsupials, so they have mm -hmm. pouches. And, uh, and we've supported projects for the Tasmanian devil in Tasmania mm -hmm. off the coast of okay. Australia. So that's a good one. And go see the hellbender. See if the yeah. head is peeking out under that rock. You know? I'm definitely going to have to check that out next time, for sure. Yeah, good. good. So, great. Well, Mike, thank you so much for being with us today and sharing more about the zoo's conservation efforts. We really appreciate it. Um, hope everyone enjoys Earth Day at the zoo this weekend. And, you know, thanks again for being here. Okay, thank you. It's a pleasure.